What's up Divas and what's up Divos? It's your girl April. So of course it's Real Talk Wednesday and I'm happy to be back. So thank you for joining me again in another Real Talk. So in case you guys are wondering what's up with the hair look, I figured that I would do kind of like a throwback look today. So me and my fiance, he put this, or helped me put this together because I was really unsure of what jewelry to wear. And being that I already had on the button up denim um, tie dye shirt, I decided to go with what he mentioned and do a throwback look. I really didn't want to wear this, but he did say it's throwback. So that is for the jewelry as well as the matching or semi-matching bracelet. Just a throwback look with some kind of like reddish pink ombre lips. And of course, one of my favorite units, which is now my favorites, which is from um, the Nubian Bar. And this is their Kinky Straight Hair, and it's in the color number 10, a tint number 10. So if you guys are wondering how I did this unit and how I gave it the dark roots on the closure, because it does not come like that, it's just one solid color. I do have a video tutorial on my channel, which I hope you girls check out, and you'll see how really easy it is to achieve dark roots without messing up your lace closure. Like, seriously guys super super easy so yeah I just wanted to do like a throwback look and that is the look that I have going on today do have my sleeves rolled up and this shirt is actually from Target I got it in 2013 right before I moved to Arizona off of the clearance rack so yes you guys I've had this for some time and I absolutely do love this it's so comfortable and you can either wear it open or close and tie it so this is like one of my favorite denim shirts other than that, um, there's really nothing new. I am drinking a nice drink today. Um, I forget what this is called, but I did showcase this on one of my prior Real Talk videos. And it's that purple liqueur stuff. It has like the silver in it. Um, I'll make sure to post the information for you girls below. But it's really, really like amazing. Like one of these cups and a half of another cup will get you like nice and toasted to where you're like, all right, enough is enough. So yeah. I will put the information for you girls below for this drink, and I'm loving it. So for the makeup look, on my lips is the Debonet Matte Lip Color, and this stuff is like, okay. So first of all, it's amazing because it does not come off. I had to literally scrub my freaking lips to get this lipstick off, which is great. I am coming out with my own color with them, so be aware of that once it launches. I will introduce it as well as that as on my eyes today is the Morphe Eyeshadow 35K palette. I love that palette. Like, it's super intense, and I really wasn't going to buy it because I thought it just was like the rest of those palettes that look just like them, like the Coastal Scents or the ones you could get from China or whatever or eBay. I really thought they were all the same, but this one actually, theirs is a little bit different texture and the pigmentation is a lot more stronger so if you're interested in morphebrushes.com make sure you check them out they're really affordable me i didn't even know they were that cheap because i kept hearing everybody talking about it so i really thought that there was like some expensive high-end stuff and i was like i am not about to go and spend no more money when i finally checked out the site like months and months later it was like so cheap i was like okay april just get a few things. So I think I spent like $65. I got the eyeshadow palette. I got the nine highlight color contour palette. And I got like four brushes. And when you go on the website, there's a 20% off code. Well, I don't really know about right now. But when I purchased it a couple weeks ago, there was. So I'm amazed and I will be buying some more stuff from them. But other than that, yeah, if you want a wig mate, you can always go to my website, going with the winwigs.webly.com. And I do apologize that there haven't been any wigs for sale, but there really have been. But within a couple of hours, they sell out, so it's so hard for me to keep them posted for too long. And the one thing that I wish people, I wish people would stop doing, if it says it's out of stock, sold out of stock, why would you want to buy it? If it says sold out of stock, it means it's out of stock. There's really no need to purchase it. Anyway. And other than that, that's just about it. So, yeah, I got some really great ones for you guys today. And as always, if you want a Real Talk episode about yourself, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line Real Talk so that I know it's an official Real Talk um, email. And if you want to change the names of yourself or characters in the email, please make sure to mention that in the beginning of the email so that way I know I don't have to go and change the names because I will never want to disclose anyone's personal business to where other people 
people are watching and they know who it is. You know how that could get. Internet world, social media is a little bit iffy. A lot of people on social media feel like they can say whatever the fuck they want to say on their keyboards. However, once they come into face with you, it's a totally different story. So yeah, let's just get into this video. I don't want to make it too lengthy with me rambling and rambling on. So here we go. Hey April, so you can call me Samantha. At first I didn't want to put my business out there, but now I'm ready to because I need some guidance. I lost my job a couple months back while sick and had trouble paying my bills. During the same time, during the same time that I lost my job, a close family member lost her home. I decided to open my home to them, her kids and her pet, and allow them to stay with me due to both of our circumstances. Since we have been living together, it was pretty hectic due to the fact that she had a job and no babysitter, and I was looking for work and going to school at the same time. I decided to help her with babysitting after my classes because she helped me by paying rent. But things were getting worse. It was, it was hard for me looking for work while watching her kids, so I couldn't really watch them as much as I as much but eventually I was watching them every day I had many conversations with her about how I wanted my home to stay how I want my home to stay and who's going to watch her children after our many of talks that seem to not work I've dealt with her children writing on my walls dirty pampers left in my home her pet peeing and pooping on my carpet stains her clothes her pet peeing on my blanket her ruining my faux blanket Things in my house being ruined and things everywhere. I moved my things so she could have her room to put her kids' clothes in. There were many of times I communicated with her that she, that she cannot do a lot of the things that I've listed and that she needs to keep my house clean because it's not her home. And she would say, okay, and eventually clean up after I said something. I would ask, can you straighten up her clothes? Can you straighten up your clothes? But it took me constantly saying it to her for anything to get done. One day I texted her asking her to not leave dirty diapers on the floor. She came and talked to me and told me not to nag her about what she needs to do around the house and that she knows what she's doing and that basically she has a life. I felt very offended because this is my home. I worked hard for it. I've done my best to help, even with rent. I took my whole tax return to pay bills, but I have been stressed out since she's been here. Thankfully, I finally landed a job, which is wonderful, but I cannot take her being here any longer. I felt like I've communicated many times only to be disrespected, and that's the fact, and the fact that she's helping me out as far as paying my rent. I just don't know what to do anymore. Help. Woo. So poor Samantha, she has let one of her close family members live with her due to both of them circumstances. One of them lost their home and Samantha lost her job. So she brought in, we're just going to call her Sarah. She brought, Samantha brought in Sarah because she lost her home and their family members. So together they can work things out and they can get the bills paid. As well as that, as Sarah didn't have a babysitter for her kids. But Sarah came with not just herself. She came with her kids and her goddamn pets. So... Sarah's kids have been writing on the walls, leaving dirty diapers all over the place. Her pet has been shitting and pissing all over Samantha's home, ruining her carpet, leaving stains. It just gets worse, okay? So, on top of that, Samantha is constantly telling her, listen, you got to pick up after them. Listen, your pet is doing this. Listen, stop leaving shitty diapers, dirty diapers on my floors. Basically, clean up. This is not your home. And now Sarah is starting to feel like, okay, you're nagging me. I got a life. I know what I'm doing. Stop nagging me. She's had enough. Samantha's had enough. She's final. She's finally found a job, and she can't take it no more. What should she do? Here's my take on that. First of all, I'm going to get a drink because I could entirely feel how you feel. I know the feeling. Now, I'm going to say I know the feeling because... I had close family members living with me too, which was my son and his girlfriend and their two-year-old, which is my grandson. Now, mind you, my middle child, who's 17 now, we call him Wuzzle, he gave up his room, which is downstairs, to them, and he decided to sleep on the pull-out couch just until they got on their feet. 
let me tell you, it's always great to help out anybody, especially if it's a family member, because you would want and expect the same in return if you were down on your luck. But I was really excited about them coming from New York to stay with me because they were down on their luck. They didn't have a place to live. They basically needed to get back on their feet. And Arizona is a really great place to do that. It's a whole lot of different jobs out here, as well as the living um, situations are a lot cheaper and a lot better. Well, within a couple of weeks of the arrangement, it started getting really hectic. Little boy, I'm not going to even call him little boy, but my grandson, he was writing on my walls as well. He would be up to 2 in the morning playing, screaming, breaking my statues, my collectibles, just breaking things in my house. You know what I'm saying? Spilling cereal, walking around with bowls of cereal with milk in them in my house, which milk stinks if you get it in the rug. So I'd have embedded cereal and milk in my rug, okay? I would have my bathroom downstairs, which was filthy. Like, do you take a bath in a nasty tub like that? Like, who does that? It was just a lot. And on top of that, the noise and just the mess and just the extra. So I can totally feel they didn't come with a pet. But let me tell you guys, that was enough. Finally, they moved out. I was happy about that. And then they moved back for like six weeks, which I was ready to just kill myself. I was always in my room. I did not leave my room. I constantly stayed in my room just to keep the fuck away from them. So here's the thing, Samantha. What you should do is you need to give her a time limit of when she needs to move out. And that's what I had to do the second go around with them. There's the time li limit of when you guys need to leave. You guys want to go back to New York. Here's the time limit. This is when you guys need to leave my house. Because this is not a free room and board. And not only that, but this is my home. And I cannot take all of this extra bullshit in my life. Like, there's no reason to be in anyone's house and you feel like you're being held captive. You feel uncomfortable in your home own home sometimes we try to help others because we love them and we want the best for them but our intentions may just not be their intentions what we take for our home and what we take precious they take for granted you know what i'm saying because it ain't her shit if it was sarah's shit that her kids was breaking and doing all of that extra shit she'd have a problem with it i'm pretty sure she wouldn't want them fucking kids right on her goddamn walls and leaving dirty diapers but if that's the way she lives then so be it, she needs to live elsewhere. Before you guys take in anyone in your home that needs a place to stay, you need to truly investigate what their lifestyle is like before you let them in. Yeah, everybody comes with a sob story. I don't got nowhere to live. I don't got no place to stay. I ain't got no job. That's, that's normal. That's life. It happens to the best of us. However, you cannot just open your door to anyone, friend, foe, or family. It's just facts. Even if they're family, you sometimes you just cannot open the door for them. And I learned this the hard way. There was so much friction in my house, me and my eldest son arguing and bickering. And it just was to the point where, you know what, I just cannot take it anymore. And you guys got to go, okay? So my opinion and my advice would be, before you let anyone in your house, Find out what their lifestyle is like. If they already got somewhere to live but they can't live there, why don't you go to their home and visit and see how their hygiene is, how their cleansing habits are, you know what I'm saying? What their true story is. Talk to other family members and ask, hey, you know about such and such? What's their circumstances? What's their true, you know, reason for why they can't stay where they're at? What do you know about their situation? That's what I would do. You know, you may not get all of a report that you want, but at least you'll get some type of knowledge. It's nice to help people out, but sometimes people take your kindness for a real fucking weakness. And I'm going to tell you like this, Samantha. Your cousin Sarah, I think she's overstayed her fucking welcome. Like, seriously. There is no reason for her to let her fucking kids run around your house drawing on your goddamn walls, breaking up your shit. And on top of that, her pets pissing and shitting all over the place. If that's what she like and it don't bother her, then she needs to hurry up and get the fuck out. Now, me personally, she's got a job, so there's no reason why she cannot find somewhere for her and her children and her fucking pets to live. So what I would do if I were you, a lot of people like to give 30 days notice. This is what you need to do in 30 days. Bitch, please, you got two fucking weeks to find somewhere to live. And I would basically tell her this. You know, if you don't feel like you can talk to her verbally, which I think is the best alternative instead of writing it down, then I would basically tell her in a letter, not a text message, but a letter, listen, you know, this is not working out. I love you as a family member. However, 
The living arrangements are not suitable to my needs as well as to you and your family needs. So I do need you to find your own place for you and your family. And I'm giving you into such and such date to find your place and move out. I do apologize and this may come as a shock or it may come as an inconvenience to you right now. But I need my life to get back on track. And with you and your family being here, it's not suitable for me right now. That's it. And if the bitch get out of character, you can let her know, listen, bitch, if you keep running off at the motherfucking mouth, the police will be here and they will escort you and your family the fuck out. That's it. She needs to leave. Don't feel like you can't say nothing. It's your mouth. It's your house. Put her in her place and let her know she got a certain amount of time to get the fuck up out of your house and that be that. Of course, she probably going to go back and tell your mama, your father, your brother, your sister, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, your nephews. Whoever, she going to go back and say, this bitch put me out and et cetera, et cetera. There's always two sides to any fucking story. And that sometimes it might be three and four sides to any story. However, I wouldn't even give a damn. I wouldn't be too concerned about how she felt at the time. But this is your home. And like you said, you worked too hard for it. And that is the same way that I felt about my own shit. My freaking Buddha statues being broken. And I didn't just come here and buy the shit that I have in my house. I had this shipped to me meaning it was in new york when i had this stuff i bubble wrapped the shit out of my stuff i paid for it to be moved here so i worked hard for everything that i have and i may not have a lot of exclusive shit to a lot of people but what i do have i worked so hard for it okay and i'll be damned if anybody's gonna come into my home and ruin or break my shit the fuck up i know about the dirty carpets because as soon as my son and his family left Girl, I spent $300 with the carpet, carpet cleaning company to clean my carpets and get them back brand new. I was not about to do that shit while they was here. Because you got your son, who's two, running around to one, two, three in the morning playing and laughing and screaming and crying. Like, really? Who does that? Take your little ass and go to sleep. Don't you know there's other people in the household that got to get up and go to work or go to school and do what they need to do? You know what I'm saying? It's hectic. That's why that was my first mistake, and I'm going to tell you this much. It'll be my last mistake. I wouldn't give a fuck if your ass is homeless and I knew you. I'm not about to invite you into my home because I'm not going to put my own self and my children in jeopardy. And I'm not going to put my own self and my children in a situation where they feel uncomfortable. I was not the only person in here that felt uncomfortable. Remind you, I have four other kids, and my daughter Tatiana was pregnant at the time. My son Wuzzle gave up his room for them to sleep in. And then I have my two younger daughters who constantly had to give up their toys to this um to their nephew because he was always crying and if he didn't get his way he was throwing himself on the floor like a flopping fish out of water like constantly if you told him no he will fall out like really do fall out to me. just fall the fuck out just take your ass to sleep and just go somewhere so it got to be really hectic and because of that situation i would never allow anyone that needs a place to stay to come into my home because you're not about to disrupt my family life. And we all have hard times and that's how it is. That's part of life. But it seems like when you give a mile, the other motherfucker want to take a hundred miles. And it's just not sensible to allow family members all the time in your home. Because for one, they feel like because they're family that it's okay and that you'll be understanding to the situation and you love them no matter what. Yeah, we love you no matter what, bitch. I'm not understanding to the situation. And bitch, no, it's not the fuck okay for you to come up in here and leave nasty, dirty diapers on the fucking floor. Let me tell you something. If that was the case and you was leaving shitty diapers all over my motherfucking house, I would take them and I would put them right on the smack of your pillow where you lay your head at night and let you see, bitch, I'm not fucking playing. Get your dirty ass diapers and your little trifling ass kids and get the fuck up out of here. Sometimes even you have to do things just to make those people feel uncomfortable and make them want to leave, which is unfortunate because I would never want to stoop down that low to make someone feel uncomfortable in my home to where they have to leave. But sometimes the situation calls for it. But my advice to you would be to sit her down and let her know, listen, you have this amount of time to leave my home and that's it. I cannot live like this no more. You need your own place for you and your children. Bottom, bottom line. 
So let Samantha know what you would do in this situation. Or have you girls ever had a situation that's very similar to this? Whether it be family or friend that you've let stay with you. And after a while, it just became a real, real nuisance. So let's get on to the next Real Talk. So this one is pretty short. Hi, April. My name is Angie. She changed the name. And I'm 26 years old and I live with my mother while I go to school for pharmacy. I'm her only daughter and she's very overprotective when I talk to guys. So one day, leaving school to head home, a guy stopped to chat to me. At first glance, he was handsome. But all he could conversate or say was nothing but four-letter words. Basically, ghetto talking ass nigga, a.k.a. dope boy. I wouldn't say I was brought up in a stable household. I've lived in the hood before my parents just wanted the best in terms of language. So this guy is very interested in me and, it, and made it clear that he wanted to know me. He told me he was in the process of getting his life together from him being in them streets. He wanted to get a 9 to 5 job and settle down and wants me to put and wants me to be in that picture with him. But what screams in my ear is the fact that he feels like trouble. My mom says the same thing, but judging a book by the cover sometimes have its pros and cons. What would you do? Love your channel, new subscriber. Thanks. So, Angie is 26 years old. She lives with her mom. She's the only daughter, and she's going to school for pharmacy. Her mother is basically overprotective when um, Angie talks to guys. And I could totally understand it because these guys out here are nothing but, not all of them, but a majority of them spit a lot of good game. So, this one guy that she met, we just going to call him Michael. He is basically an illiterate motherfucker if you ask me so his vocabulary is not that intense it really doesn't go too far he uses the ghetto terminology a lot his words don't pass four letter words he's always speaking and i guess you would say ebonics or what have you you know ghetto terminology i'm not really familiar with all of it but you know i do know some um and she's not you know what i'm saying she said she ain't living no suburban neighborhood she grew up in the hood but her parents didn't want better language for her which is totally is totally acceptable now the guy is basically screaming to her about yeah i want to get my life together i want to get a nine to five you know i could be in any streets was he in jail um I'm not really sure if he's been in jail, but he wants to settle down. And she's trying to figure him out, but she, he, he, his presence and him in general screams trouble. And her mother is agreeing. And what would I do? Girl, please, let me tell you something. Hmm. If it screams trouble, bitch, it is fucking trouble. Okay? Now, these niggas will tell you whatever the fuck they think you want to hear. He want to get a 9 to 5. He want to get his life together. How many times have many of us heard that same fucking lame ass line? I'm going to get my life together and I'm going to get a 9 to 5 and I'm going to stop doing this and I'm going to stop doing that. Nigga, please go sit your ass down in the corner somewhere. Turn the fuck around and put a dunce cap on because you were stupid. Do you think I'm as stupid as you are? Do I look stupid? Or are you just that fucking stupid? Angie. He's telling you some shit that he wants you to hear. Of course he's going to tell you he want to get his life together. He want to work a nine to five. Who doesn't? But did he mean that shit today or tomorrow or any time in the nearest future like next fucking week? That is one of the oldest fucking lines that I've ever heard. I'm going to get my life together and I'm going to get it together and I'm going to do this. I've heard that. Trust me, bitches. I've heard that. I've heard that. I've heard that. Remember, I was married. I've heard that. I've heard that. I've heard that same fucking bullshit, okay? They tell you what the fuck you want to hear. And he's probably telling you this shit because he knows you go to school for pharmacy. So, of course, you got your life together. And why would you want anyone less than you? And I'm not saying he's pond scum. However, he's not on your level. He hangs out in the streets. And you ain't about that life. So what? You grew up in the hood. So did I. I grew up in the hood. I grew up in the projects all my life. But my mother did not tolerate slang terminology. I could not even use the word ain't around her because the word ain't was not in a dictionary. So she constantly cor corrected me on my grammar. And because of my mom and the way she instilled certain moral values in me, I am so thankful because... I don't go around here using slang terminology just because I grew up in the projects does not mean that I got a B-hood. You know what I'm saying? 
Sometimes our living situations do not reflect on the people that we are. And just because you grew up in the hood does not mean that you're a bad person and does not mean that you're ghetto. However, it's the way that you carry yourself. And if you can barely understand this motherfucker because he's using slang terminology all the time, why even bother? I have been in a situation like that like a long time ago. A long time ago. And it was my ex. He, my ex, he would use all these different slang words all the time like... Whenever he would talk, that was his whole conversation, too. I should have knew that from the jump. Okay, this motherfucker can't even speak perfect English. Like, So, I'm not trying to be nobody's teacher, but that shit gets irritating after a while. Like, what the fuck are you saying? You know, you got to constantly say, what? What does that mean? Okay, I'm going to correct you on your English, and this is how you're going to pronounce it. And this is what it's really called. Stop using that slang terminology. A lot of people think that that shit is cool, like, you know, using Ebonics. You know, sometimes, yeah, I may use it too, like, on fleek. I don't know if that shit is on fleek with a K or fleet with a T. Either way, okay, sometimes we use slang terminology and it may be just for the moment but if you're constantly hearing that shit coming out of someone's mouth bitch you'd be so fucking confused you don't know whether he said to wind your wind your watch or scratch your ass or scratch your watch and wind your ass you don't even fucking know you just be lost and why why go down in standards if he's screaming trouble girl please run because he ain't nothing but trouble a lot of the times they will tell you what the fuck you want to hear. Of course, I would hope for the best of him that he will want to get his life together. Because you do get old eventually and your old ass cannot be in them streets doing dope boy dumb shit. Okay, that's what we're going to call it. Dope boy dumb shit. Alright, you just can't. You want to be old and we got these new generations that are growing up. These teenagers that are growing up that have no respect. So you're going to be old dope boy doing dumb shit when we got the new dope boys doing extra dumb shit. And then what the, what the fuck? Let me tell you. Yes, he probably does want to get his life together. And yes, he just may want you to be part of it like he said. But girl, please open up your fucking eyes because that is the weakest and lamest ass game I've ever fucking heard, okay? Sometimes when they come at you a game, spit that shit back at them. They will be fucking amazed and probably will believe everything you're saying just like they were hoping that you believe every fucking thing that they were saying out their fucking mouths. So, if he screams trouble, then nine times out of ten, the nigga is trouble. And if he's been in the streets for that amount of time... What other bitches does he have? What other bitches is he telling? I want to get my life together and I would like for it for it to get it together with you. Like, nigga, please go get your life together and just please get the fuck up out of my face. You should have been got your life together. If you like in your late 20s, don't you really think that you should have been got your life together? Because we ain't getting no younger. We getting older. And as time evolves, we getting older and time is passing us by. So when, when does he feel like he's going to get his life together? Okay? And, sweetheart, don't let it be with you. Because all he's going to do is pull you down. And you're going to be a part of some dumb shit. And if you're going to school for pharmacy. And you're getting your life together already. Find someone that has gotten their life together. Or is basically doing the same things that, that you are doing. Because a bad apple and a good apple don't really work well together. You know what I'm saying? The rotten apple always kind of oversees the good apple. You know what I'm saying? Because it's rotten and the shit inside of it is just so potent and overpowering that it kind of like grasps onto that good apple and just fucks it up. It may not fuck it up 100% because it can't. However, it's still a bad apple. Like, you ever left something out for a couple of days? Like, I've done that several times. Like, I cooked some dinner and I left the chicken out and it just gets really, really rancid. That one little piece of chicken will fill up the whole house of bad smell. Or better yet, here's a better example. I made some yellow rice one time. And I left it in a pot for days. I just hate washing the dishes. And I have a dishwasher. But anyway, that little bit of rice just starts to get really bad. And it had a top on it. But once you open it up, it sometimes seeps out the top. It just overpowers the entire house. And it's like, oh my God, this is rancid, this is bad. And everybody is feeling like this bad smell. We are all getting like this bad vibes. We can't take the smell. It's fucking up our attitude. We're running around here like, what the fuck is that? What is that potent smell? Hey, we're, not, we're not in no good place. And that's how I'm going to describe him. Fucking old rice that been sitting on the stove and rancid 
ass motherfucker, a rancid ass smell, and fucked up the whole entire environment. Don't be a part of his dirty ass rice environment. And I know y'all like, what bitch? But yes, that's the best way that I could describe him or anybody like that because poison can over overseed a lot of good. You know what I'm saying? When people are positive and they're doing positive things and then you get around a crowd of people or just one person who's just constantly negative, 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 feeding you nothing but negativity, that shit wears on you. And it's like it starts grasping you and then you it don't let go. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I stay the fuck away from people. I don't have too many friends. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't like negativity. I sometimes am negative enough. So I don't need nobody's extra drama and extra negativity clenching onto me and my soul and fucking up my vibe. I get like that when someone has pissed me off. Sometimes you can tell that I'm mad and it reflects on my day and it reflects how I act as a person. So... I try to just basically stay away from a lot of negative shit. And a lot of times I got to walk away from the shit. And I'll give you a prime example. So I was checking out my comments on YouTube. And it was my makeup haul video. Did this fucking bitch. And I'm pretty sure she's watching because she follows me on Instagram and YouTube. But you know who the fuck you are. What is her name? Love something. Some dumb shit. But anyway... Did she write on my video, it's not, basically, I can't remember word for word, but basically saying how, oh, I always have my hair done, but she looks on my Instagram and my daughters don't have her hair done. First of all, you, and but she don't like to talk about nobody's kids, and et cetera, et cetera. A couple people went at her. I, for one, came back, and I was like, excuse me? First of all, my kids are barely even on my Instagram. And when they are on my Instagram, which is very rare, you don't really see them too much. You see my grandson a lot. She talked about my daughter. She... Their hair is in braids. I pay $220 per head sometimes to get their hair in braids. So what the fuck are you talking about? Um, I had to basically go in be on her and let her know without threatening her because I was, I did write, don't get fucked up. But then I had to let her know, don't get your shit, don't get your mind fucked up. Don't get your mind screwed up to where you think that my social media and me are the same type of person because you really don't know me that fucking well. You really don't. And I take really lightly to anybody talking about my motherfucking family. And not only that, but my kids are barely on my Instagram. So watch your mouth. Choose your words real wisely before you come on any of my social media because like I said, bitch, you really don't know me that well. And I'm going to just put that out there to this bitch if you watching. You really don't know me that well. And that goes to anybody. You don't know the person because you see a person and they doing videos or whatever, taking pictures, and you think that they're nice because they're smile. I'm a really nice person. However, don't strike me the wrong fucking way because if you do, you have some problems. And don't go on people's social media leaving dumbass comments neither because, like I said, you don't really know that person. And it ain't that hard. It really ain't that motherfucking hard. To find out where a motherfucker lives, it's not that fucking hard, okay? You don't want to open up your door one day and somebody be standing outside of there like, what, bitch, what the fuck you say about my kid's hair? Or what, bitch, what the fuck you say about me? You need to really watch what you say to people on social media because they're crazy or you're crazy ain't they're fucking crazy. And I know this as a fact. So watch what the fuck you say. But like I was saying, I let sometimes people get to me and not even get to me, but... It will fuck up my day. And that shit kind of pissed me off for a minute until I blocked her. And like my fiancé said, he's he made a valid point about social media. So that's why I don't really put my kids on there like that. Because I don't really think that people need to know my every move or what have you about my family. I don't really think that it's everybody's business. You know what I'm saying? Those are my kids. And I don't think that they need to be subjected to like my social media life. There's already bad enough that people in their school follow me, you know what I'm saying, and they know me as Muffin is my lovers, but I don't really feel like my kids need to be, you know, subjected to so much social media, but I do let, sometimes I, it does bother me when people say dumb shit, and it fucks up my day, so someone's rotten can make your day, or you, a little rotten, so Angie, stay the fuck away from him, because if he's trouble, and he's screaming trouble, 
then fuck him. He's trouble. And if he ain't got his life together, but he wants to get his life together, bitch, please, you, surpa you surpassed all of that. You don't need to be trying to lift anyone up that's really that low. Like, I'm all for lifting people up, but there is a time and a place for that. And there are people and programs who can lift them up just as well. You don't always have to take on the entire lead of helping someone the fuck out. But know where you come from. And yeah, your mother is right. She expects perfect language. And that's the same way as I expect for my kids. But know your worth. And eventually, when your time is right, you will find the perfect gentleman. Not some freaking Ebonics motherfucking nigga that's talking slang. And you probably like, what did he just say? I don't even know what he just said. So, please, let him get his life together. Pray for him. Just Fucking pray for him. That's what I'm going to tell you. Pray for him. So, I know I kind of probably went all over the place with that. But let Angie know what you girls think about this situation. So. Here's the next one. First and foremost, thank you for allowing me to have the chance to have my story heard. I have followed you for a while and I love your channel. So, thank you. Names have already been changed. My name is Dakota and I'm 33 and I have four children that I love. I am in a relationship with Memphis, who's 35. He is a perfect provider and a great father, but terrible companion. He works seven days a week, pays all of the bills, and keeps a working, updated vehicle for me to drive. He has a great relationship with the kids, but we never do things as a family. Hell, we never do things as a couple. I brought, I brought this to his attention, and he keeps saying that he is preparing for our future. I love Memphis, but he has no compassion, no romance, no passion, no loving, just work and money. I have to initiate sex, but I have to make sure he's in the mood first or give him head before anything gets started. So frustrating. I don't even get kissed on the daily. I simple kiss not even when we make love. I met Chicago. I met Chicago. He's 15 years. Oh, I met Chicago. He is 15 years my senior and, and full of passion and energy and compliments, etc., etc. Memphis is the second man I have been with and the father of my youngest child. We went through it for two years off and on, starting from the time he knew I was pregnant. He honestly dogged me out, but he was all I wanted, so I made myself available when he called. Memphis has a child from another woman, younger than our child, but we still ended up getting back together. I cheated, and it was so damn good. <laughs> She said, I cheated and it was so damn good. I am so full of guilt and now doubt it because I don't know if I should leave my relationship or stick with Memphis. He is honestly not the same man he was before, but he has a childish personality. Example, still says these nuts, flicks people off, licks out his tongue. Chicago seems to be what I want to be around or at least have the opportunity to see. I feel like I have to choose between what makes me feel alive and being loyal to someone who has been there for me. I just need some advice. I need a big sister on this matter, please. Wow. So Dakota is 33. She's got four kids. And one of them is with this guy named Memphis, who is 35, who's basically a workaholic, works seven days a week, has no compassion, no loving, no romance, doesn't initiate sex. She has to initiate it, and she has to start off by sucking his dick. Yeah, I said it like that. Okay, he doesn't do things with the kids and her as a family. He doesn't do things with her as a couple. He's re He does relate to the children, but basically he ain't concerned about nobody but making money and working and talk about he's preparing for the future. So she has already, um, Dakota has already cheated on a dude with someone named Chicago who is 15 years older than her and... To me, it seems like he has sparked a flame in her candle that has burnt, burnt the fuck out for a minute. Now she's got to choose between the one that makes her feel comfortable, makes her feel love, makes her feel romance, makes her feel like a woman, opposed to the person that's just been there for her, who makes her feel miserable and don't do shit with her. That's not hard to decide, honey. First of all, you are 33 years old. You ain't. 23 you ain't 13 you 33 you got four children life is ticking by tick 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 and life is short whether we know it or not life is so fucking short it's ridiculous however why the fuck would you want to stay in a relationship with someone who makes you downright fucking miserable oh yeah that's great he provides you a working vehicle that's fine cool kudos to that and he pays the bills Kudos to that too. Shit. Okay. And what? But 
the spark ain't there and probably how you feel about him you cringe to the touch and you're probably only doing what you're doing because you need to satisfy your own needs sexually if you gotta cheat on someone then that means that you don't need to be with that person honestly if you feel the need to cheat with someone then you don't really need to be with that person Point blank, period. Why put yourself in a predicament where you're going to stay with them because they do stuff for you? Do the shit for yourself. Make sure your car is working on your on its own. And be happy. Life is short. Cool, you guys got a kid together, but he's got a kid with someone else. And what's that make? What's what's that looking like? How's that working out for you? And on top of that, he dogged you out while you were pregnant. You knew that he wasn't shit, but you made yourself ready and available for him when it was convenient for him. I'm going to tell you this. I ain't about to make myself convenient and ready and available for nobody at their own convenience, nigga. If you can't be ready and available when we are as a couple, then nigga, you can go ahead somewhere. Family things, working is cool. Yes, we all have to work to provide for our families, but there's a time and a place. Life is short. You need to enjoy life. You need to enjoy life as your family. You need to enjoy life with your children. Maybe he doesn't want to enjoy the life with you and the kids because that is really not where he wants to be. So he drowns himself in work and doing things to make himself happy and to probably avoid you. Now, I'm sorry, but if you have to initiate sex all the time by sucking him off, then please, he'll be having a dry ass up dick and he wouldn't get anything sucked or touched. And I would please my own fucking self with these, okay? Or get yourself a toy. But better yet, if you like Chicago and you're feeling him and you guys are like sparking up each other's flames, then why not just end what you got going on? It takes a toll. It takes a real big toll on you after a while when you're with someone that you're really not feeling. You start getting numb. You start losing passion for just like a lot of things. Not even with him, but just a lot of things with yourself. And then you find yourself not caring about your appearances and your looks and certain things around your household and just life in general. Because you're so fucking miserable. And I have dealt that, that fucking card for too long. So, with me, I'm not about to allow anyone to bring me down and make me miserable because that is how they feel. If that's the lifestyle that he wants to live and he wants to be working all the time and making money and doesn't want to spend time with you and the children, then so be it. That's the lifestyle that he wants to live. But I'm not about to allow you to make me and my children um, irritated and miserable. And you know what I'm saying? Like... I'm pretty sure you go out and you see families together and you're probably standing there wishing that, damn, I wish this was me. We have a family, but why can't I have this? Stop wishing because I was one of those. Stop wishing that shit and just be about it. You know what I'm saying? If he's providing these things for you, then bitch, provide them for your own fucking self, Dakota. Don't, you never rely on anybody to provide for you fully because that's where they get you. If they provide for you fully, that's exactly where they get you. They got you right where they want you and this is where they start treating you like it really doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, it fucked, it's fucked up that you cheated, but like you said, it felt so good and you felt alive. So why not continue to feel alive? Never let anybody fucking bring you down and make your life miserable. And that's just exactly how I feel about life in general. I'd rather be by myself than be miserable with anybody. And that's just, that's just what it is. Because if you're about to make me miserable, and you make me miserable, I know in my heart, I can make my own self happy. I don't need to rely on anybody to make me happy. I don't really need to rely on anybody to provide for me. But myself. And I rely on me and so do my children. So you got four kids and they young children, I think. However, move on. You need to explain yourself to nobody but your children. And if this nigga don't want to grasp it and you've already tried, girl, please. Ain't but too much you can fucking try. Life is too fucking short, okay? And why continue to cheat? Why continue to cheat when you can just be done with it and not have to creep? You know what I'm saying? Why continue to cheat when you can just be done with it and not have to creep? So really quick, leave your comments below for Dakota. And one of the ladies here asked me, can I explain how I met my fiancé? Um, she asked me to, can I do a story of how I met my fiancé? It's really not that... Um, doesn't take a rocket science to figure it out if you watch all of my other videos how i met him is he's actually my middle son wuzzle who's 17 about to be 18 that's his father so we have been friends for a long time and yeah i cheated too with him on my ex because i loved him and he made me happy and he made me laugh and he made me feel good so we finally got back together and that's how we met each other i met him because he's my kid's father and 
we're happy together. So, yeah, that's basically how we met each other. Nothing too fancy. We knew each other for, like, ever. But, yeah, so, like I said, see, I'm not allowing anyone to fucking push me down and make my life miserable. So, on that note, leave your comments below. And, as always, stay diva and divalicious.